Hey everybody, it's me, Sung One, and today we've got a big box of anime. This was sent to me by Right Stuff. Uh, you can go to their site at rightstuffanime.com and uh, buy anime stuff from them. They have tons of DVDs and figures and merch on there. Uh, and they sent me a big box. And when I say big, I mean really big. So let's uh, let's check it out. So these are all DVDs and Blu-rays, and I'll just talk about each show because uh, I want people to watch the shows that I like. Uh, the first one here is, this is A Lull in the Sea. This is the premium edition box set, and I believe this is a Right Stuff exclusive. So basically what this show is about is um, humans, uh, actually, actually we came from the sea, and some of us stayed under the sea, uh, and some of us went on land in the past, and so... Uh, these kids who uh, used to go to an underwater school um, have to, uh, once it's closed, they have to go to a school on the surface, and then there's some um, some drama going on. It's a it's a very nice slice of life, but also kind of like a drama as well. This was a show I was actually not I was actually a little put off by the art style at first because they first of all they're all like like what middle schoolers and they all look like big big-eyed anime people, um, but man, this really got to me, uh, and I can't, I won't spoil anything, um, but there's a certain point in the show where I was like, oh shit, like when I realized what, what was gonna happen in the show, uh, from that point on forward, uh, man, so it really, uh, nails the emotions, uh, in this show, uh, and the characters are very likable. Uh, it's it's just it's hard to describe, but it's it's like slice of life with just the right amount of fantasy to it. Like it's a very grounded world, and like you can really feel like this was a reality where there were people who like lived who lived in the sea. Um, like on on land, they have like water dispensary areas because you need to have like water to live if you're a water person. Uh, it's really interesting, so I highly recommend it. A Lull in the Sea. It's fantastic. Here's a show I haven't seen in a while, but I still love. It's uh, Black Lagoon. This is the first and second seasons on Blu-ray. Uh, they also sent me uh, Black Lagoon, Roberta's Blood Trail, which was an OAV, uh, which was also quite good. Black Lagoon is about a bunch of mercenaries, um, part of the Black Lagoon Company. Uh, the main character is... Uh, his, name is his name is Rokuro. He's a Japanese businessman. Um, and he gets, uh, his ship gets, like, hijacked by Black Lagoon, um, and so they kind of recruit him into their gang, and he becomes, a uh, Rock. And it, it kind of shows, um, how Rock sort of gets more hardened and starts slipping morally as it goes on. The city the show takes place in is this ridiculous city where, like, all the gangs uh, just meet, like, the triads and... Uh, the Mafia, and they all just, all of them are there. Um, there's a lot of fun characters. It's a very violent show, very action-packed, and also Revy is best girl. I mean, she's crazy, but I love her. Here's one I watched pretty recently and really enjoyed. This is Hyoka. Um, they sent me part one uh, and part two. The best way to describe this show, it's like um, a mystery-solving show, but all the mysteries are like non-crimes. Like, they're like minor mysteries, which sounds boring, but it's very charming. Uh, I think what helps is that the main two characters I adore. Um, the main girl is, uh, Eri, or not Eri, Eru, and she's, um, she's, like, obsessed with, like, curiosities and mysteries. And then there's Oreki, um, who is just, like, this guy's like, I don't care. I don't, I don't want to expend energy. I don't, uh, just whatever. But when you combine them together, they are a lovable duo. Uh, I actually also really like um, Ibarra. Um, Ibarra is also like, actually she's like my best girl in this. Um, I didn't like him that much. But anyway, so it's a it's a KyoAni show, so it's beautifully animated. Um, and it's something that, it took me a little bit to get into, but man, like, there are some great episodes in here. Um, some, and some, it, the mysteries, are kind of episodic, but then they start doing some, like, longer mysteries, and it's genuinely, like, pretty engrossing. Um, I think it helps that the characters are so strong. Uh, so I would recommend this Hilka, 
I enjoyed this a lot. Here's a show that many of you are familiar with, I'm sure. It's My Hero Academia. This is season one. Uh, I enjoyed the show quite a bit. I just recently watched season two and loved it. Um, My Hero Academia is about super... It's like superhero Harry Potter, where the whole world has superpowers, and these kids want to be superheroes. Um, the action is superb. Um, it really does feel like Harry Potter, though. Like, in a very good way, because I love Harry Potter. Um, like, there are instructors that, like, teach them how to, like, control their quirks and different, like, challenges that they face. And then every now and then, shit gets real, and then some villains appear. Uh, but, and yet, you, it still all comes back to the school. If you haven't seen this, I mean, I'm surprised, but you should watch it. Like, the designs are also fantastic. I mean, look at those character designs. Super fun show. This is basically the new Naruto, in a good way. Here's a blast from the past. This is The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya Seasons 1 and 2. So it looks like the episodes are in the 2009 rebroadcast order, which I don't necessarily agree with. I think the best way to watch this show, at least the first season, is to watch it in the original TV broadcast order, because the show is clearly formatted in a way that that is the best way to watch it. So I've, I've always wanted them to release, maybe they did in the past, I just didn't know about it, but one where the first season is in the TV broadcast order. Because uh, I don't, I didn't watch the 2009 rebroadcast, except the new episodes. So I don't know if it's, anyway, I don't know. I guess I'll find out. Anyway, it's a great show. Uh, it's an older show, older show, like two, early 2000s, but um, it's, I think it's it's a really funny and interesting show. Like there's a lot of like, can't spoil it. I don't want to spoil it, but there's a, I mean, you've had time to watch it if you were interested, but just in case you haven't seen it, it's about this girl named Haruhi and I won't spoil anything, but she recruits like people she finds interesting, like alien, like aliens and espers and time travelers in her school. Um, but how can I say this without spoiling it? I guess it's more than it seems. Uh, it, 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 it seems like it'd just be a normal slice of life, but there is some supernatural elements going on in the show. There is some crazy shit that goes down in this. So, uh, it's really good. And I, I absolutely loved the movie. This is the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. Um, this kind of made me go... Like, oh, I love this series. Um, it, like, takes it to a new level of, like, emotional stakes. And again, I can't really talk about this movie without... Because that, that beats spoiling too much of the show. The way it goes down, I really liked this when I watched it. But the movie, I was like, oh, I love Haruhi Suzumiya. Anyway, go watch Haruhi. If you haven't seen it yet, what's the hell your problem? On a semi-related note, here is Lucky Star. I say semi-related because they're both KyoAni and uh, the main character is voiced by Aya Hirano. Um, but Lucky Star is also, this is one I actually watched pretty recently, maybe like last year uh, for the first time. I just never really watched it and I really enjoyed it. It is extremely laid back, extremely slice of life. It's just a cozy ass show though. Like the girls are very cute. Um, it's something that, I don't know, it's just a cozy show. I don't need all my shows to be super deep or super, what's the word? Super emotionally involving. Sometimes I just wanna watch some funny some funny stuff go down. Sometimes I just wanna watch uh, fun interactions. What I like about Lucky Star is that it does really feel like the characters are hanging out, that they're just chilling, which I don't think a lot of anime can really capture that feel. Um, but I think Lucky Star does a good job. And there's some genuinely funny stuff in here. I just really like Lucky Star. Shut up. Let's continue on the cute, cute girls doing cute shit train. Here we have k -On. Here's season one right here. Uh, they also sent me season two in two parts. Um, and then they also sent k -On the movie. Uh, if you haven't seen k -On, k -On is about um, some high school girls who want to start a music club, uh, start a band, and so um, they form together and practice together and drink tea and eat snacks, and uh, it's extremely a slice of life. And yet, it's Kill Annie, and the direction is quite good. Like, I recently read some of the manga for the first time, and man, the anime is so much better. It really takes kind of mediocre subject material and elevates it to just beautiful, a beautiful show. 
Yeah, you definitely don't want to watch this if you really want a deep, engrossing plot. But as far as Slice of Life goes, it's one of the best. I think I really enjoy it. It's just purely enjoyable to watch these characters interact. And man, it's so cute. Here's a very obscure title I don't think a lot of people saw. I think it's called Attack on Titan. Uh, I'm, I, just, I think this slipped under everyone's radar, but if you're not aware of the show, um, basically there are these big monsters called Titans. Believe it or not, they eat people. Nut, that's nuts. Um, and so this guy, um, uh, Aaron Paul here, uh, he has to try to, to defeat the Titans because uh, he's real tired of them eating folks. So anyway, I, I, I just wish people had seen this. It's just this, a hidden gem, I think. Uh, but anyways, really good action. This was actually, okay, uh, I'll drop the bit. This was a show that I intentionally didn't watch when it was airing. I watched it way later, like maybe like a year or two ago. For the first time and I was like oh, yeah it's really good because uh, I, I was kind of put off by the hype train um, but it's the action's good the it, it goes at a nice brisk pace and the characters are cool it's just a fun show like they're like the sh parts where they're flying through the air and fighting like it's very thrilling uh, so I enjoyed Attack on Titan quite a bit too bad nobody saw it here we have Death Parade it's uh, another madhouse show um, I mean, I enjoyed this quite a bit, and usually with, um, sort of, like, episodic shows, uh, where, like, each episode is, like, kind of its own thing, like, own enclosed story, um, I usually like them, but I'm not that into it, but this one, the concept is super cool. Basically, um, if two people die at the same time, they're sent to a place, uh, where this guy is, and they have to, um, play, like, a game and uh, if you win, you live again, and if you die, you're gone. At least that's the initial concept. And so, um, this guy is like the bartender, um, and so uh, it basically just goes through each episode about different games that these people are forced to play. And then uh, this girl comes and doesn't remember her name, and uh, uh, there's, there's that kind of like a running plot line through it. Um, otherwise, it's just a cool, slick show. Um, some very emotional moments. Um, obviously, great animation because it's Madhouse. It's a very, it's a very good show. Um, the concept is super unique and executed well. It has a nice little universe that feels like it's always been going. I always like universes like that where you step into it and it's just like, yeah, this is what it's always been like. There's always been this weird, these weird games happening with these these bartenders. Uh, it feels like a nicely developed sort of world. Here's one I actually have not seen. This is Sound of the Sky. Uh, I don't know what this is. In a lonely corner of the world on the edge of no man's land sits Clock Tower Fortress. It's home to the one to the 1,121st platoon of the Helvetian Army, and their newest member is a 15-year-old volunteer named Kanata Sorami, who enlisted to learn how to play the bugle. Okay. When she was a child, Kanata was saved by a beautiful soldier and found inspiration in the clear golden sound of her trumpet. From that, day, from that day forward, Kanata decided music would be her life. As the other platoon members train her how to be a bugler and a soldier, Kanata's endearing optimism will inspire them to look for happiness and beauty, even in a world haunted by war. That's interesting. So it's it looks like it's a Moe girls show, but there's soldiers in war. Uh, I don't know if this is like a drama. It sounds dramatic, but the designs speak to me of... Moe, um, hmm, interesting. I'll probably, I'll check it out. Sounds sounds interesting. Here's another obscure title. Uh, did anyone watch this? One Punch Man. I don't I don't know if anyone watched this. Um, but if you don't know what it is, it's basically um about this hero named Saitama who uh can kill anything with one punch. Wow, just that's why it's called the One Punch Man. Uh, but seriously, One Punch Man is great. It's very funny. The animation is superb. Uh, I've been reading the manga, and the manga is also superb, uh, and so the the fact that the anime was able to match that is a feat upon itself, because the paneling and art of the manga is so good, and the anime kind of like takes the challenge and manages to knock it out of the park. One is a really funny writer, uh, I'm very curious as to what the next season will be like, but overall, uh, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the show quite a bit. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And then we got Haikyuu. Haikyuu Season 1. Man, I love Haikyuu. 
Uh, Haikyuu is a volleyball anime about uh, Karusuno, they, this team that uh, used to be good and kind of like stopped being good, and then they sort of, um, I don't know if they stopped being good, but anyway, anyway, it's about this guy, kid, Hinata, who is super short, and uh, turns out he can do an amazing, amazing spike. Like he's really good at hitting the ball super fast, and so uh, it's about him and working together with his team. Uh, man, if you haven't seen a sports anime, go watch Haikyuu. Haikyuu is absolutely superb, genuinely thrilling. The characters are all wonderful. Um, I was, especially in later seasons, I was actually cheering while watching the show. That's how much I got into it. Go watch Haikyuu. And finally, here are eight volumes of Space Brothers. Uh, I love Space Brothers. Space Brothers is an anime about two brothers, one who is an accomplished astronaut and the other one who wanted to be an astronaut, uh, but it just didn't work out. And he's like, what, 31? Yeah, 31. Uh, and the two brothers, when they were kids, promised that they would both become astronauts together. Muta, after some circumstances, uh, decides to just go for it. And he's, he's, you know, he feels like it might be a little bit too late for him, but he still wants to try it. Um, it is an extremely inspiring show. The characters are great, but man, it really gives you some feelings when you watch it. Like, just, there's, I think, a lot, there's something that anyone can relate to with the idea of following your dreams, you know, wanting to pursue something even though you aren't sure you're going to get it. Uh, man, like, I'm not, I don't want to be an astronaut, but it's still connected with me quite a bit. This is a show that I would highly recommend. I love Space Brothers. It is so, so good. And I don't think, it's not one that I hear about that much, but man, it's great. Please watch Space Brothers. Okay, and that was everything. Thank you so much, Right Stuff. You sent a lot of anime, and I'm very happy about that. So thank you. Uh, I really appreciate it. If you want to go buy some stuff of your own, Right Stuff anime, check it out in the link. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.